All right. So, my name is Andy Saylor. I'm a PhD student here in the computer science department. I work in the systems group, so I kind of specialize in research involving computers themselves. So, closer to the hardware, less abstract, more electrical engineering, yada, yada, yada. My undergrad's actually in electrical engineering, but I went to computer science because that's all anyone in electrical engineering does anyway. So there is a website for the course. Uh, it was included in the last email. The notes from these classes will be up here, links to the videos, uh, other things that I think about after this that I think should be added will all be on here, as well as the dates that the course is going to be run. Uh, so it's just foundation.cs.colorado.edu slash Arduino, and then from there you can link. There'll be pages for the individual courses. So I didn't really get all the notes done for tonight yet, but eventually I will update the page for tonight with the notes of everything we're going to go through here in a minute. So uh, should you want to go back and duplicate this later, you are welcome to do so there. There's also my contact info on that site. I assume you all have it because you've been getting emails from me, but you are, of course, welcome to send me an email uh, if you have any questions, if anything comes up, so on and so forth. So again, hopefully this was all clear from the structure of the email, but we reformatted the course a little bit, so we're just running it for two weeks, so it'll be tonight and next week. Tonight we're going to kind of focus on getting the system set up, going over the basics of programming it. Next week then we're going to be building a little project with the system and some of the other accessories for it that we have here. Um, and if you're interested in going beyond that, we'll probably be running another set of more advanced versions of this course after spring break, so sometime in April or, you know, um, yeah, April at this point, because that's after spring break. Uh, so if you wanted to do a more advanced version, that might be available then. If you're looking to do a class project or something and you're interested in using this platform, you know, these are all available to be checked out after we're done with these courses. So uh, should you want to check one out and play with it on your own time, you can do so as soon as I'm done running the courses with them. Uh, they're also not terribly expensive. The board itself runs at about $66, and then the, your, all the accessories we're using make it add up to about $100 with everything. Um, you obviously don't need all the accessories. It kind of depends on what you want to do. There are links to the board, how you can purchase it, all of that jazz on this website as well. So if you're interested in buying yourself a setup like this so you can do whatever you want with it, uh, that's also an option. Questions on course formatting? As well. So, what are we actually using? Uh, the board sitting in front of you, and you're welcome to take it out if you haven't already, is called a PC Duino, and in particular, this is the version two of their board. So, the PC Duino is kind of a combination between an Arduino and a traditional computer. So if you've used a Raspberry Pi or a Beagle board or something like that before, it, this is not dissimilar, but it also has the Arduino headers on it. So it, it can do a lot of the things the Raspberry Pi can do, but it can also connect all the accessories that kind of exist in the Arduino world. Um, this is what it looks like. It's essentially a little single board computer. So on this board is all of the same things that you would find in your laptop, all the same things you would find in your desktop. Uh, obviously, this is the $66 version of everything you would find in your laptop instead of the $1,000 version or whatever your laptop happens to cost you. So it is scaled down, right? I mean, this is not going to be as fast as a laptop or it's not going to be as fast as a desktop. But conceptually, all the same parts are there. Uh, you have the main processor here, this is a system on the chip that has a CPU and a GPU inside of it. Um, so this is doing all of your core processing, all of your graphics processing. You have a couple of RAM chips, um, and then underneath there is a flash chip that's basically like a little hard drive, a little 4 gigabyte hard drive. Um, for output, it has an HDMI connector. That's, you know, just kind of a standard video out, digital video output. You could use this to connect it to a TV. You will be connecting it to the monitor sitting in front of you. Um, but that's where your video is coming in and out. It has an Ethernet jack for plugging into just a regular, you know, RJ45 Ethernet port if you happen to still be using wired internet. It also has built into it a wireless board. So this is your little Wi-Fi board with the antenna running around the board there. Um, so it has Wi-Fi built into it as well. You can join it directly to a Wi-Fi network. That's also what we'll be doing tonight should you need to connect it to the internet. Um, and then it has a USB port, which you can obviously connect to a USB hub if you need more than a single USB port. Should you want to connect keyboards, mice, USB drives, webcams, you know, any of the wide range of USB accessories you might be interested in. The formal specs for this are all online. This, you know, probably isn't terribly interesting, but if tables full of numbers are your kind of thing, then this is kind of what we're dealing with. The processor is a one gigahertz ARM core, so 
unlike an Intel processor that's using what we call an x86 instruction set, this is using an ARM instruction set. It's very similar to what you would have inside your cell phone, uh, assuming you have a smartphone, or what you would have inside a tablet. These are all ARM processors. They're, they're a different kind of processor than an Intel processor. They're what we call RISC processors, reduced instruction set processors. Um, if you take CS2400 or you're interested in computer architecture, you can dive into all the details of what that actually means. But what it effectively means is it's going to be slower than something like an Intel chip, but it's also going to take a lot less power. Uh, this is why we like these things and things like phones and stuff like that, because they're really low power processors. Um, and they're very capable. You know, it, it may not be as fast as a state-of-the-art Intel chip, but you know, you have a $66 board in your hand that's able to do everything that a state-of-the-art computer 10 years ago would have been able to do. So that's progress. Um, <laughs> It has a GPU built into it with you know, various capabilities, so it'll do things like <coughs> HD video if you're interested in doing things like GPU processing to crunch big tables of numbers and all of that jazz. You know, there is some onboard hardware that's specialized for that kind of thing. We're not really going to be focusing on that in this class because GPU programming kind of goes beyond what you can get into in two weeks. But it does have a GPU available, meaning that you can do GPU intensive things on it as well. Uh, by default, it has a gig of RAM, so that's just the amount of memory that's going to be available to you. We said this before, but it also has four gigabytes of built-in flash memory. So the hard drive essentially is going to be this four gigs of memory built into the device, and that's what we're going to be using for this course. It also has a micro SD slot, which takes the same kind of cards a camera or your cell phone would take. So if you need more than four gigabytes of storage, you can buy a 16 gigabyte card, a 32 gigabyte card. You just pop that in, and then all of a sudden you have 32 gigs of storage instead of four. Um, the stuff we're doing in this class for will be more than enough, but if you're interested in expanding the platform, that's available. We already said it has HDMI output. The operating systems it'll run, so it'll run Linux or Android. Android really is Linux, so really it just runs Linux. Um, we're going to be using the Linux side of things. We're not really going to get into Android kind of programming in this course, but if you know an Android API or an Android platform is something you're interested in and you want something that costs less than a $500 feature phone, you know, you can, in fact, run Android on these boards and experiment with programming on top of Android as well. So again, not getting into that in this class. In this class, we're going to be using uh, what's called LUbuntu. So it's essentially a version of Ubuntu, the same thing that's on the desktops in here, the same thing that our virtual machine runs. Um, except it uses a slightly different graphics background that doesn't require quite as many resources and runs a little bit better on a low power machine. Derek? Doesn't it also have to be compiled for the ARM processor then? Yeah, so these operating systems are already pre-compiled for ARM, but it's pretty easy to find Linux systems that are compiled for ARM. So, you know, you can install regular Ubuntu on it as well, it's just not as fast. Um, but essentially, you know, you can think of it as the same kind of environment you would have on these desktops that you have in the virtual machine. Just a little bit slower and with slightly different graphics. Um, it has the Arduino headers, so this means, the, Ar the nice thing about the Arduino <coughs> header system is there's a ton of accessories for various Arduino boards. So. This is just one of many compatible Arduino boards. Uh, so Arduino is a separate company that actually builds their own name brand boards unaffiliated with the PC Arduino. Um, but this will take the same accessories that those boards take, meaning there's a lot of options out there. So sitting in front of you, you have a, uh, a little sensor shield is what it's called. That's going to stick onto those Arduino headers and allow you to plug a variety of little tiny sensors into it or input output things. So we have LEDs and we have temperature sensors. That's what I should have just handed you all, although I was kind of doing it quickly. So it's possible I screwed that up. Um, so hopefully you all have that one shield and then you have two little sensors on cables, one of which should look like an LED and one that should have a little black microchip that's a temperature sensor on it. Um, in addition to those, we also have buttons, we have buzzers, and we have um, and we have light sensors. So those are all also available to use with this kind of a board and many others as well online. You can also plug things like LCD displays into it. Um, we actually have smoke detectors as well that we can plug into them. So there's all kinds of accessories and little kind of sensor devices you can plug into this board, depending on what kind of project you're looking to do with it. Um, we already said it has Wi-Fi and Ethernet, and it just runs off a little 5-volt power supply. So the same kind of power supply you'd use to charge most phones. A micro USB 5-volt USB power supply is all it takes to power one of these things. So this is a traditional Arduino. This is the Arduino Uno. It's kind of like the canonical Arduino board. Um, so traditionally, Arduino kind of got their start as being these little single-purpose computers that you can add all these accessories to. So you'll note this has the same kind of headers on it that the board sitting in front of you do. 
The difference is an Arduino won't run an actual operating system. This is a far lower power chip than what you have on those boards. And the way you normally work with an Arduino is you'll use a separate computer to write a program for it. You'll load the program directly onto the board, and the board can only run the program. There's no operating system. There's no like, graphical output. It's not a full-blown computer. Uh, it's designed to kind of just run the core programs. So the PC Arduinos are more versatile in that they can do everything this can do, because uh, it can still talk to all of these accessories, and you can run a single program. But it's also running a full-blown copy of Linux, so it's easier to install other things on it. You can program directly on it instead of needing another computer to program it. Uh, you can hook it up to a display, all of these other kind of nice properties. Um, so, like I said, it's kind of a, this, if you're familiar with the Raspberry Pi, Arduino's been around way longer than that, but it kind of dates back to a time before we could really have the cheap chips cheap enough to build these things that could actually run operating systems a lot more powerful. So just as a quick comparison, you know, these are similar systems that are out there, right? We were just talking about the Arduino Uno. You've maybe heard of the Raspberry Pi. I've done, I do a class on it in the fall, so... If you're interested in the Raspberry Pi, pay attention again where it's a similar class to this, but on the other half of the year. Um, and, you know, so this is an actual full single board computer. This will run Linux as well, but it doesn't have the same headers as this. There's a whole set of things called Beagle Boards, and this is one of theirs. Same kind of deal. It'll run all of Linux. It has its own set of accessories. So what you kind of have sitting in front of you is a combination of one of these things and this thing. So if you smash these all together, you kind of get what happens to be sitting in front of you there. Like I said, we have a number of accessories that are going to go with it. I kind of touched on this already, not realizing my slides are still coming up. Um, like I said, this basically just gives you, it's just basically splitting out what are in all of those little headers on the edge to make it easier to plug things into them. Um, this has analog inputs, analog outputs, digital inputs, and digital outputs. So we'll get into what accessories need what later, but this essentially just provides an easy way for you to plug a bunch of little things into. In particular, like I said, the things we have is we have a variety of LEDs you can plug into it. Uh, we have some buzzers that you can plug into it. We have temperature sensors. Uh, this is a light sensor, so you know if you're interested in sensing the light level in a room, that's what this is for. We have buttons, so you know if you want to have a button, you can press. And I didn't put the, uh, I didn't put the smoke detector on here, but we also have smoke detectors as well, which are actually the smoke detectors, not just one of these little things. It's a full-blown shield, so it would actually disconnect on top here. So that is the hardware that's sitting in front of you. I totally lost people. 